So I'm going to open the systems note sheet. And uh, where we left off yesterday, or in our last class, was solving by substitution, like the warm up that we just did. Okay, so this particular problem, you know, we made our substitution where D equaled this. So we plugged it in for D. And we then solved that part to get our other variable. And then plug that C back in to get D. Okay, just like we did with X and Y. So we've really gone over two ways to solve these systems. We initially started solving by graphing, if you remember that. Remember, we were graphing and finding the intersection of the two points. So that's one way to do it. And the second way was what we were doing yesterday. That was the solving by substitution. And so today will be the third and last way to solve them. And that is solving by elimination, okay? Sometimes called a linear combination, but usually people just say elimination. And that's because we want to eliminate one of the variables. So for problem number 6a, if I look at this problem, I notice that 2x and negative 2x, those are opposites of each other. So what I can do is just add these two equations down, and just like you would add anything down. And if you add them down, notice that 2x minus 2x would be 0x, so I'm not even going to write that. They cancel each other out. So we have eliminated the x. And 5y minus 3y is 2y. And negative 4 plus 0 is negative 4. Okay, so I just added the two equations down, which eliminated the x's. And now I can divide by divide both sides by two, and I already have half my answer. And so y comes out to be negative two. Now that's half of my answer. So I need to plug that then back in to one of the equations to solve for x. So I'll take the negative two, plug it into the top. So the top was 2x plus 5, and instead of y, now I'm going to write negative 2, is equal to negative 4. Okay, so I just took that negative 2, I plugged it into the top, and now I'm going to be able to solve for x. I'll blow that up a little bit. So I get 2x minus 10. I'm going to multiply 5 times negative 2, right? Equals negative 4. And we're off and rolling to solve that for x. I'll add the 10 to both sides. And I get 2x equals 6. Where x equals three. And so my solution is three comma negative two. Right? My x was three and my y was negative two. So just a little different method. Again, we used elimination by adding them down to eliminate our x's. So if we were to use the same method for part B, if I add these two equations down, uh, what's going to cancel out? The x's or the y's? The y's, right? If I add them down, because 3y and negative 3y will cancel each other out. So let's do that. So I'm going to add those two equations down. 
So I have, you can write a one there if you want. One X minus three X would be negative two X. My Y's are going to cancel. And one minus 15 is negative 14. So I have eliminated the Y's. Now we divide by negative two and we have half our answer. So I'll divide by negative two. And so X comes out to be seven, positive seven. Remember negative divided by negative, positive seven. All right, now let's then take that, plug it in so that we can solve for Y. So on the top, I get seven plus three Y is equal to one. And I need to solve that guy for Y. So I'll subtract seven from both sides. And I get three Y equals negative six. And then I will divide both sides by three. And so y comes out to be negative two. And so our solution was that x was seven, and y was negative two. All right, any questions before, the next one's gonna be a little bit harder. So are there any questions before I move on? All right, so again, in this problem that we just did, I just, I noticed that those Y's would cancel out if I just added them down right away. So I was able to eliminate that. Let's take a look at problem D. D is a little bit different. Because if I add them down, the X's don't cancel. And the y's don't cancel, so I can't just add them down right away. That stinks. Okay, I really wish like this was a seven y, but I can't just change that problem because I want to. But what I can do is I can multiply everything on the top equation by seven which is gonna make that top equation 35x, okay, seven times five y, x, plus seven y is equal to nine times seven is 63. So I multiply everything by seven, Because now if I you know ignore that second line and I use that you know top line and this line, if I add those guys down, now my y's are going to cancel. So now I'll add my x's down, 35x plus 10x is 45x. Seven y negative seven y will cancel out, and sixty three minus eighteen is forty five. So x is equal to one. Can divide both sides by forty five, right? X is equal to one. And now I know that now that I know that x is one, I can plug that back in to any of the equations. So I've been doing the top equation. I'll do that again, but you don't have to if you want to use smaller numbers. But I'm going to do 35 times one, which of course is just 35, plus 7y is equal to 63. So I'll subtract 35 from both sides. And 
Okay, seven y equals, uh, let's see, 63 minus 35, I believe is 28. And then divide by seven, and y comes out to be four. Our solution is x is y, I'm sorry, x is one, and y is four. All right, so if we wanted to do one more, let's say we wanted to do problem C. If I were to add them down, nothing's going to cancel because that's going to give me 6x and that's going to give me 7y. So neither one of them cancels. So how could I change this so that something does cancel? Come on, help me out here. Yeah, we, we want to make one of them, like if this was a negative 3x, that would be great because then our x's would cancel. Okay, but I can't just multiply the first one by negative one. I have to do that times everything. Okay, I guess I did it in red before. So I'm going to multiply everything by negative one, which changes that bottom equation to be negative 3x minus 3y. Don't forget we have to change all of it is equal to negative 3. Wouldn't that be positive three? Oh, it would be positive three. Thank you. Good catch. Where would you get the negative one? Yeah, I so where did I get the negative one from? That we have to kind of come up with our on our own. Um, but where I got it from was I looked at the equation, I said, well, this is three x. And I would really like to make that negative 3x so that they cancel. And so how do I make the bottom negative 3x? I have to multiply by negative 1. Okay, so you kind of have to come up with that part on your own. Now, once we do that, I'm focusing on the top and bottom equations there. I'm going to add them down. So my 3x minus 3x cancel. I have 4y minus 3y is 1y, and negative 2 plus 3 is 1. Look at that. We already have half our answer. y is equal to 1. So let's take that and plug it back in and finish it off. So I have 3x plus 4 times 1 is equal to negative 2. Okay, I'll subtract the four over. Right, three X is equal to negative six. We're gonna divide both sides by three and X will come out to be negative two. And so our solution is negative two, one. So really two different kind of problems that we did use in elimination. Um, the first ones were easier. Like if you have something that's going to cancel out right away, I would always use elimination. It's really easy. You just cancel that out. So like in this middle one, I could see that those threes were going to cancel out right away. The three Y and a negative three Y. For, for those other two problems, not as easy. I had to multiply that second equation by something so that my x is canceled there. Just like in the other, the uh, part D, I had to multiply that top by seven so that my y's would cancel out. Okay. Are there any questions on this?